Hello, I'm Joshua Schick. I'm a curator here at the National World War II Museum. And I'm Kaylee Martin. I'm a historian here at the National World War II Museum. As we continue to celebrate the Navy in October, we want to look at four stories of naval sailors that the National World War II Museum tells. At the beginning of the war, the U.S. Navy was a service of just over 330,000 men. By the end of the conflict, more than 3.5 million Americans had joined the U.S. Navy, including 160,000 African Americans, 11,000 Navy nurses, and more than 85,000 waves. Before America's entry into the war, the only naval service open to women was the Navy Nurse Corps, which had been established in 1908. Even after the creation of the waves in 1942, which allowed women into the regular ranks of sailors, only Navy nurses were authorized for overseas duty. Dorothy Wood of Salem, Virginia, worked as a registered nurse before enlisting in the Navy Nurse Corps, becoming one of over 11,000 women to do so. After commissioning as an ensign in July 1943, she attended a new eight-week training course to become one of the first Navy Air Evacuation Nurses. In 1945, these flight nurses aided in the evacuation of the most seriously wounded patients from the front lines via transport aircraft. Naval aviation came into its own during World War II. At the tip of the spear were the naval aviators of the carrier air groups. Flying in fighters, torpedo bombers, and dive bombers, these air crews brought the fight to the Imperial Japanese Navy. On June 4, 1942, 18-year-old California native Don Hoff climbed into the back of an SBD Dauntless dive bomber aboard USS Enterprise. The day's flight would be his first foray into combat as VS-6 sought out the Japanese fleet at Midway. Wearing these summer flight gloves, Hoff manned the radio and machine gun in the rear of the dive bomber. As his aircraft pulled away after bombing the Japanese carrier Kaga, Hoff could see the enemy ship exploding and burning. Over the next two days, Hoff participated in all four attacks on the Japanese fleet at Midway. Officially, the U.S. Navy was a segregated service, which only permitted African Americans to serve in the stewards branch, tending to officers' needs aboard ship, a restrictive role that was difficult for many to accept. However, every man serving aboard ship answered the same call to battle stations. Cook, second class Eugene Tarrant of Dallas, Texas, was one of these men. Assigned to the heavy cruiser USS San Francisco, Tarrant's battle station was on an anti-aircraft gun. Tarrant recalled that while he experienced racism in the Navy, aboard the San Francisco during the night battles off Guadalcanal, every man came together as a struggle to survive could overcome men's prejudices. Despite his mixed experiences at the end of the war, Tarrant refused to re-enlist due to segregation in the Navy. By the end of the war, over 69,000 U.S. Navy sailors and officers had given the ultimate sacrifice when they were killed by enemy action during World War II. Tens of thousands more were wounded or changed forever by what they experienced. One of these sailors was Myron Brophy. Fireman Second Class Myron Brophy of Dorset, Vermont, enlisted in the U.S. Navy in January 1940. After serving aboard a number of ships, he was eventually stationed on the USS Arizona in Pearl Harbor and was killed in the opening moments of the attack when the ship's magazines exploded. Just days prior, Brophy had written a letter to his sister describing a hopeful transfer to Boston to be closer to his family. Brophy, along with over 1,000 of his shipmates, were never recovered and remain entombed in the USS Arizona. These are just a few of the stories told about Naval Service members here at the National World War II Museum. Thanks for joining us today.